I am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. He's the author of the book Whispers of the Flight, no other than Mr. Inam Inamula. Welcome to Book 101, Mr. Enum, and can you please introduce yourself? Me? I'm sorry? Yes. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry? Can you please introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'll be delighted to. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. I truly appreciate that. Uh, as you mentioned very nicely that my name is Inam Inamullah. Uh, I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia, in the U.S., and um, I just finished uh, a book of my debut novel called The Whispers uh, of the Flight, and it is already on Amazon for pre-booking of e-book version, and the paperback and hardcover will be available on the 16th of August. Uh, and uh, Audible also hopefully will be available on the same date. So all four major formats will be available uh, on the 16th of August. Professionally, I'm an artist. Uh, I do oil paintings on canvas. Uh, if you're seeing the cover page of the book, uh, that's painted by me. Uh, I'm known all around the world uh, for my oil paintings. I primarily do landscapes. I'm also a poet. I'm also a playwright. I produce and direct uh, stage plays. And these plays, we do Broadway quality plays, and they go all over the U.S., uh, you know, different, different cities. Uh, personally speaking, uh, I'm originally from South Asia. I was born uh, with uh, a huge disadvantage that I got infected with polio. So my right leg uh, was affected, uh, still is, uh, and uh, I had to face a lot of challenges as a child uh, growing up. Uh, I was not able to play uh, uh, with other kids in the school when I was five years old and was admitted in the school. So lots of challenges, but my art teacher used to take me every day in her art class and used to teach me how to draw, how to paint, and that's how I turned out to be a professional artist. Congratulations, Mr. Inan, for sharing your talents to the world. And can you Thank give you. our listeners a brief overview of your book and what inspired you to write it? Whispers sure. of the Flight. Absolutely. The story behind the book is, uh, Mr. Lucas, is that um, I was exposed to a poem uh, in English language, which was actually written... Uh, 900 years ago in uh, in Persian language uh, by uh, a poet named Fariduddin Attar, who was actually Rumi's uh, teacher. And uh, that's a long, long poem, about 4,500 verses long. And it teaches the Sufi mythology that, you know, the same uh, theory that Rumi uh, has taught to the world. And it's my understanding that Rumi is the most read poet and writer in the world. So uh, when I was exposed to the poem, uh, the brief summary of it in English language, I was flabbergasted. I was exposed to ideas that I was never exposed to before, although I've been reading and writing for <laughs> through all throughout my life. So I wanted to learn more. Uh, so I was able to locate uh, a professor of Persian language who knew the old uh, books written, you know, almost a thousand years ago. And I retained her uh, and I learned from her twice a week for six months. Each class uh, was uh, 90 minutes long. So I spent six months just learning one poem. Uh, and the poem is called, in English, it's called The Conference of the Birds. And in Persian Arabic, it's called Mantakul Tayr. Uh, it's a story of uh, uh, basically birds, uh, primarily 30 birds. And the story is that the birds get together one day and they say that every nation has a king 
and we don't have a king. So uh, the hoopo bird, who is considered to be a divine bird in Abrahamic religion, in uh, Judaism and Christianity and Islam, it has the same same value, the bird. And uh, it comes forward and it says, uh, no, I know there is a king of the birds too, and I can take you there. And all the birds decided to follow him, and uh, he decides to fly. And he takes them through seven different valleys to reach the destination. And at each step, uh, uh, the difficulty increases, and some of the birds decided to return back. And uh, But at each step, he tries to convince the remaining birds to move forward. And to convince them, he tells a story you know, some kind of a parable that they try to understand and learn the meaning of, you know, making progress, moving forward ahead. Of course, these valleys are all metaphorical valleys. And, you know, the, for example, there's a valley of love, there's a valley of quest, there's a valley of bewilderment, a valley of annihilation. So he crosses through all those seven valleys, taking the birds. And they always ask, what is the name of the king? And he used to reply back in Persian language that it's called si Murv. Uh, it's a combination of two words, uh, combining and making a word called si Murv. And uh, when are you going to si Murv? And he said, well, you got to continue. He, we got to go to the seventh valley and cross that. Finally, they cross the 30 birds cross uh, the valleys, all seven valleys, and they reach the destination. When they reach the destination, they see nothing but a large mirror. And they, they ask Hupu, where is uh, the bird? Where is the king? And Hupu says, uh, you know, you look in the mirror. And they, they look in the mirror and all they see is the 30 birds. You know, all the 30 birds that reach the destination. And then he uh, gives them a speech and he says that Si Murg in Persian language means 30 birds. So he knew right from the beginning that 30 birds will survive and reach the destination. But at the same time, he tells the bird that we are part of the kingdom. We are part of the universe. And if you believe in any kind of God, we are part of the divinity. And the divinity and the universe is part of us. We are all one, one unit. And we are scattered all over the place, but we are all part of one. And that's the message that he wanted to send them across. But for them to understand that message, they had to go through an inner cleansing process from the seven valleys that they traveled through. So when I learned that, I was very fascinated. And I, of course, learned the details of it too. So what I decided to do, I mean, I had a situation to face, you know, what am I going to do with this information that I spent six months learning? And I cannot go to my children or anybody else, let's say, who lives in North America and tries to explain them the philosophies behind that. So to make things easy for people like my own children, young adults and others, that I wanted to, I decided to write this novel, uh, make it easy for them to understand the message. In the novel, I have the following main characters. I have two young adults who live in New York and who decide to go on a hiking trip in, uh, uh, in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. And the Atlas Mountains of Morocco are also famous for the Seven Valleys. And in their hiking group, there is a senior person who's a guide, who's a professor of history who knows all, all the parables, who knows all the poems of the past. And he's, he takes them through this turf journey of seven valleys in the Atlas Mountains. And at each stage, a lot of people turn back, but some people go ahead based on the stories he tells them. And he uses the same stories that the Hoppo bird uses in the original poem. And when these kids, when these youngsters who are hiking reach the final destination, they find themselves to be reformed. They find themselves to be self-enhanced. They find themselves to be new people, new person, much better than before, because they learn the basics of life 
you know, through this process of seven valleys that he teaches them exactly in the same way the hoopoe teaches the 30 birds. So that's the crux of my novel. So, Mr. Inam, did you face any significant challenges along the way when you're writing Whispers of the Flight? Well, I've faced a lot of challenges in my life to start with. You know, as I mentioned to you earlier that I was, uh, I'm a polio patient. I worked with UNICEF. I worked with Rotary Club. I worked with other organizations as an ambassador to go out and speak because there are only two countries left in the world that still have polio. And we want to eradicate that in the next five years. So I'm working, I'm giving my contribution to make that happen. Growing up, I faced a lot of challenges. You know, kids are very brutal. When you go to school, as, a, as someone who cannot walk properly, you don't get treated properly. So I had to face all those challenges. I, have to, I had to learn how to be persistent. I had to be, learn how to be strong and how to survive in tough environment. So that's why I worked very hard on my art and became a world-renowned artist. You know, Art Business News ranks me at the top 25 artists in the U.S. and 40 top artists in the world in the landscape category. So all that happened because I had to face so many challenges growing up. Now, going back to your question, my biggest challenge was when I was writing the book that how do I take these complicated philosophies especially originated in the Persian language, which is a very beautiful, but at the same time, complicated language that I don't speak to learn the basics of it, to be able to understand the meanings behind and then convert that message in two segments. Number one, to transform into a different language without losing the meaning of the original words, at the same time, making it simple enough for an average English reader to be able to follow and understand. And I'm, I think I've made uh, uh, the right choices in, my, in writing this book. And finally, uh, uh, I'm seeing the success. I just want to share something with you is that, uh, that if you go on Amazon right now, and uh, today is, uh, is the 7th of August, uh, and you look at the ebook, pre book category, in the three segments, categories that my book is listed, I'm number one right now in all three categories. And the reason is... Congratulations. Thank you. And the reason is that people look at the cover page, they like it. When they read that it's, it's painted by the author himself, when they read the details of the book, which is a one long page, when they read that, they get fascinated by the story and they definitely decide to, to follow. How did you come up with the title of Whispers of the Flight? <laughs> we, uh, I discussed uh, the topic with my son, who is also a writer. Uh, um, we, had, we came up with 20 different names. And the reason is because the original story, we had to stay true to the original story. And the story of, was, the, was for the, the birds and the birds fly. So the flight had to be in there. And since the original book is the conference of the birds, a discussion, a forum, a canticle of the birds. So in my situation, since it is being discussed in a different environment, and in many cases, the coach, the, the sage in the novel actually whispers slightly conveying his message one by one to these individual hikers. So I thought the most appropriate name would be Whispers of the Flight. Ah, uh, interesting, uh, Mr. Enam. So can you describe the main characters or themes in the sure. Whispers of the Flight? Sure. Uh, there are uh, uh, three main characters, a uh, uh, young couple, a female and a male living in New York. Uh, the female's name is Maya. And uh, the male's name is Zach. Uh, Maya is someone who is familiar with old uh, works of the East, poetries and other philosophies. Zach is someone that who is not familiar with it. And not only that he's not familiar with it, he is kind of uh, apprehensive about it. He He's not sure whether they hold any values in this world today. Uh, but they both share the... Uh, 
the desire to be uh, to go on a hike. And Maya intentionally suggests going to Morocco to the Atlas Mountains because she knew that when, when Zach goes there, then they will be able to get exposed to similar situations. And maybe she might get lucky to be able that someone might be able to explain uh, the theories behind Conference of the Birds to him. The third character is the sage, the, the professor. His name is uh, uh, Professor Ansari. And he's the guy who leads uh, this whole group uh, to, through the seven valleys. And he's a very experienced man, a professor in the university, a uh, very learned man, professor of history. And, and that's how he knows all the stories. And that's how he finds the opportune time to tell the stories to keep the group involved. Now, in addition to that, um, there are birds uh, because he's telling the stories of the birds. So, uh, you know, Hupu uh, is, is a, one of the most, of course, visible uh, bird character. There are other bird characters also that are discussed in the book. And, and there are some minor characters uh, as part of the hiking group that take part into discussions too. But uh, as far as the main characters go, these are the th three main characters. Wow. Interesting, Mr. Inam. Again, congratulations Thank for you sharing so your debut novel to the world. But before we go on, Allah, I want to shout out my ranking tops for the last 30 days, according to Paddy Status. Because in, okay, in Jordan, got 40 on the apple chart mexico thailand philippines egypt tanzania moldova and a lot more thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writers authors all over the world like mr inam inamula so mr inam did you draw any personal experiences when you crafting this book I will answer that question, but since you, I, I heard so many of your listeners are from other countries, I have to interject this, that the book will be available globally. Uh, however, it will be available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and other sites uh, starting from 16th of August. The only uh, uh, market that's currently open for pre-booking for the ebook version is U.S. only. Even Canada will start on the 16th of August and all other countries is going to be uh, starting on the 16th of August. So that I just wanted to your listeners to know that because if they go and search today, they will not be able to find it. It has to be 16th of August or onward for them to be able to find it. Uh, what did I learn from my own book, my own writing? Uh, I learned a lot while learning what to write in this book actually yes and and you know some of the things that really hit me hard was that life is short we spend an enormous amount of time on stuff that are unnecessary we need to focus on things that are important people who love us our friends our family we need to be honest to ourselves and to everybody else. We need to be truthful to us and to, we, uh, to everyone else. It is good to have money. Money makes one's life easy. And we need to have the basic necessities fulfilled. At the same time, spending too much time having greed in our heart uh, to pursue the financial gains is something that never buys happiness. And we always fall on our faces when we try to do that. And we lose a lot of our loved ones while pursuing unnecessary pursuit of the toys or the, or the money. So, yes, we need to earn money. We need to pursue that, but up to a limit, up to an extent, so that we retain and what we have is to enjoy. So these were the major lessons that I learned. And I also learned that the connectivity with the divine is very important. And, and, and a divine may mean differently for me or versus for someone else. It, and it does not matter what it, you know, there's no one definition. And whatever divine means to you, I think can, having a connection with the divine is extremely important. 
And uh, that's also something that I learned the importance of it uh, while I was writing the, writing the book. Very well said, Mr. Inam. Thank you so much for your insight. And what do you hope readers will take away from your book after they reading it? First of all, I hope I hope that people enjoy it because entertainment is definitely part of this. It's a novel. It's not a it's not supposed to be a, a pure self-help uh, type of a book, but in fact, it's a self-help book. It's a self-help novel. And I hope that at the end of reading the book, uh, you know, people will find themselves or at least will get certain ideas how to be better in their lives, how to be better to their loved ones, and how to be able to sleep uh, at ease every night. Yes, definitely. But before we go on, Mr. Ilan, mm-hmm. I just want to plug in my audiobooks. People, please do purchase one of my audiobooks. Stand tall, stand together, breaking the chains of bullying. And of course, Book One One Review, Volume One, highly recommended. These are my 100 episodes of Book 101 Review and one of my self help book Threads of Existence, Waving the Tapestry of Life. And one more self-help book, Life is Too Short, A Journey of Discovery, Fulfillment, and Joy. And, of course, Book 101 Review, Volume 3. Again, this is all my 100 episodes of my first season of Book 101 Review. And my climate change book, Earth Fever, The Unraveling Climate, and our Restoration. To restore balance. And last but not the least, Book 101 Review Volume 2 Selected. Again, this is all my 100 episodes of my first season of Book 101 Review. And they highly recommend it. Thank you so much for uh, being part of Audible, one of the best sellers. Thank you so much. And please support them and enjoy listening. So, Mr. Inam, were there any particular authors or books that influence your writing? I think uh, uh, Paulo Colos, uh, the alchemist, uh, was one that that I would say is kind of similar to my book, or I my book is similar to his book style. Uh, I start with the prologue, and his prologue is very powerful. I think my pro- prologue is equally powerful, and he also takes you into a mystical journey. And I'm also taking people into a mystical journey. And that's considered to be a novel too. And mine is a novel too. So that was definitely one book that uh, influenced me. Uh, as far as the structure of my book is concerned, I thought if I, I can follow that, then I think that will be the right thing to do. Yes, definitely. I agreed. So can you share a memorable moment from your writing journey? Well, uh, <laughs> I usually, I'm, uh, as I mentioned, that I'm, a, I'm an artist. And uh, uh, by the way, the book, book has a website, uh, which is the name of the book, whispersoftheflight.com. So if somebody wants to go and look at other details, it's, it talks about the author, it talks about a few other things, uh, the journey and all that. It's, uh, it's on the website, whispersoftheflight.com. And my art website is inamgallery.com, I-N-A-M-G-A-L-L-E-R-Y.com. And I, I welcome everyone to, uh, uh, I don't sell uh, art through my art. It's just uh, uh, a gallery that people can go and see what I do and at, you know, what museums, galleries, famous places I am, for example, like Carnegie Hall in New York. So uh, you'll be able to see all that and get some information about me. So um, that's the way, uh, you know, people can reach contact also if the need be. And uh, I wish uh, uh, that, you know, this book uh, people will enjoy, uh, get some messages out of it and uh, take some inspiration from it. And, 
and as I was impressed by the uh, uh, by the Alchemist, uh, written by Paulo Kahlo, uh, the collections of Mr. Coleman Barks, uh, the collections of Rumi's work, uh, uh, and he has done more than fifty books, and all of them are my favorite ones. So I was impressed with them too. Uh, so I hope that my book will also see some success uh, like their books. Yes. People, Mr. Inam Inamula was a renowned landscape artist known for his heavy textures using palette knife on a heavy canvas. Congratulations, right. Mr. Inam, for sharing your talents to the world. So what will be your advice for the aspiring writers out there? Write it from your heart. Uh, you know, whatever comes to your heart will be conveyed to the reader. Don't try to copy others. Have your own unique style. At the end of the day, you will find the readers, uh, you know, if you write it from the heart. That's my advice. And, and I mean, I, I'm very impressed with the collection of books that you have written, Sir Lucas. And, and um, uh, unfortunately, I have not written, uh, read, I'm going to read now. And definitely listen Audible now. Actually, I'm going to, I have, of course, I have Audible, so I'm going to sign up tonight uh, and uh, and start listening to your works. And some of the titles I saw in your list are very similar to my thought process and my book, actually. So I'm very much happy that we connected. We are kind of in the same family. So, uh, so to the new writers, uh, I would highly suggest write from your heart. Uh, and don't worry about uh, spellings and grammars and this and that, you know, what kind of language it is. Write it, write it, write it. There are so many resources available at the end of the day for you to fine-tune your language. They have become very inexpensive. So don't worry about it. Just take the first step is my second advice. Don't, yes. ling don't linger. Don't procrastinate. Take the first step and let's, let's move and do it. Do it, people. Do it. And I said, don't afraid to commit mistakes because yes, mistakes correct. make you perfect. And Absolutely. as Mr. Inam, stop procrastinating. If you have the passion to write, 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 write and share to the world. So what will be your short-term and long-term goals in writing, Mr. Inam? Wow, that's a that's a, a question someone else asked me today. I was not prepared for it because it's a wonderful question. I did not give some um, um, uh, much thought into it because so much energy and time was spent in this book that I'm kind of consumed right now. I want to take some rest, maybe three months. But the problem is that once you're on this journey, and I'm sure you have experienced this after writing so many books, and you see success, then then the motivation comes from within, from within, and uh, and you you start thinking about. I'm sure every book writer, when he or she is writing a book, has at least five ideas in their minds at a, at a time. And they select one topic from those five ideas to write the book. So there are three, four more ideas behind, in, behind every writer's mind. So I just have to go back and select one. If this theme that I have written about uh, is something that's... Uh, uh, that succeeds, then I would like to bring this team closer to the mindfulness techniques. And I would like to write my second book in such a way that it becomes a workbook for people to, to combine the old Sufi mystic techniques with the new modern scientific mindfulness techniques and come up with a methodology, a solution that they can practice on a daily basis. Very similar to people do different kinds of yoga, different kinds of meditation techniques. So I think this area has been kept away from the world, which is the Sufi mystic area of mysticism and meditation. I think my intention will be to bring that forth, working with a scientist to make sure that it, it offers a significant value also to the world at large. That probably would be my next project. Yes, indeed. And are there any plans for a sequel or related works to expand the story of Whispers of the Flight? 
As far as this particular book, book is concerned, it'll be very difficult to create uh, uh, another book, another, like a part two or part three of this book. I, I don't think so. But I do have certain other ideas where uh, multiple books can be written, uh, a sequel uh, can be written. Um, you know, there have been some ancient stories like uh, uh, Alif Layla and uh, 40 Thieves, you know. Uh, uh, you know, there are some, uh, Sinbad is, is, has been a very successful story of the past. You know, it, it, it does have potential of, of writing. And the one thing that I'm very much interested in the old philosophy is, is the, uh, is the 1001 Nights is, is, uh, it was compiled in multiple languages in the form of a book. But I think that is an idea that can be taken further and expanded into in addition to 1001 Nights, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And again, I want to give you a big, big hand for your achievements and your talent. Thank you so the much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Mr. Inam, can you please invite our listeners to support your upcoming Whispers of the Flight? I humbly request with one assurity that you will not be disappointed if you get this book. Uh, as I said earlier, it will be available on 40 plus markets, uh, all the major ones that you know about uh, starting 16th of August. Please, please, please go buy the book. At the end of the book, the last page of the book, has a QRC scan that you can scan it after reading the book and you can rate the book, whether you liked it or not liked it. I'm not saying you should please me and write good, good uh, remarks about me. No, whatever you feel like, the way you found the book, good or bad, please uh, take your uh, write and rate the book. Thank you. Yes, people, let's support Mr. Inam Inam La because if you support him, more, more, more books to come. And please do support him too for this, for his art. It's one of a kind, people. I just look at now and wow, amazing. And again, thank you for your talents. And I hope more, more books to come and more, more things to come. Thank so, you. So, Mr. Inam, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. More to come, Appreciate people. It. See you soon. Mr. Enough.